My name is Chris Crone, and today I'm gonna be talking about the best way to buy a house. And if you're a subscriber to this channel, you might know that I'm big in the world of investing. I've done 4,000 different investment projects. I'm up buying a house just about every single day. And so instead of just answering the question of what should you look for in buying that first house, I'm also gonna be answering how should you be doing it if it's an investment property. I'm gonna answer both of those today, right now. Cause we're gonna be So the best way to buy a house for you and for your family, I've got three core rules that will help you do it as intelligently as possible. Rule number one, don't be emotional. Emotional people make bad choices. Not always, but often. Because if you fall in love with the, with the house and don't fall in love with the deal, you could get in trouble because you might fall in love with something that is overpriced, over market, or just emotionally works, but actually doesn't work on paper. Rule number two, buy smart. If you can, buy the house at a discount. Some people literally just think that you should buy a house at market or above market without realizing, wait a second, when I buy a house, that's an opportunity for me to lock in 30 or $50,000 worth of equity or more. That's numbers on your balance sheet that you can access later, pull out, put to use, sell the house in a cinch, make sure that you're not upside down, get some of the money out, put it to work. Like, be smart when you buy this house. A house is, for most people, the biggest purchase they'll ever make. And some of you might be buying that house 20% below market. And sure, there's a couple of handyman projects that you might need to do, but what you pick up could be very significant to you and your family. Take advantage of that purchase by being smart. And the third rule, don't spend more than 25% of your total income on whatever your mortgage is gonna be. If you start paying more than that, it means that your expenses can start getting ahead of you. And for some of you, you're out there and you're thinking, well, we're gonna justify living in this house for a really long time and it's in the right neighborhood and it's the right this or that. But if you buy too much house with too big of a payment, then you actually put your family at risk. By keeping yourself to the 25% rule, this actually comes from Dave Ramsey that I really agree with, it means that you're buying a house and if an unexpected expense comes up or something shifts in your life, you've got the ability to adjust to it. And more importantly, you should still have enough left over after your other expenses to really pay yourself, hopefully saving at least 20% a year. Those are my three rules for the best way to buy a house for you. Now let's talk about the rules of how you do it when it's an investment property. And by the way, if you can blend these rules together on a primary residence, that's powerful. When buying a single family home, rule number one is buy underneath the median because the markets are gonna rise and fall. And when the market goes up, it's fun to watch a $400,000 house become a $600,000 house. But when the market drops, it's not fun to watch a $600,000 house become a $300,000 house. And that's exactly what happens. If you buy real estate below the median, it keeps you safe, it keeps you protected. That one rule right there has saved my bacon. Rule number two is you wanna buy your real estate in the very best markets which means it doesn't have to be your backyard. If you're leveraging my lease option system, that's a great strategy, you can do that in your backyard. But when you have serious money to invest from your 401k or IRA, then go to the very best markets. You can take the United States and you can cut it up into 324 mini markets. And each market is different. The people have a different mentality, people have different cost of living, people have different um, income opportunities and rates of earning out there. And so in the different areas, if you can find a way to normalize all that, you can put yourself at a massive advantage if you go into markets that have the very best of the best. That's what I do. So when I partner with people, they'll actually, I'll take them into right now Florida, Memphis in the past, Phoenix and Vegas, I'll take them into Indianapolis. These are markets where I'm averaging a 28% annual return, which, I mean, just imagine if your stock portfolio did that or your savings did that or your IRA did that. The world would be different for people. But the reality is it is for me because I earn that and it can be for you. So make sure that if you invest, that you invest in the best markets out there. And then my third rule of investing for an investment property is to also make sure that you're buying and leveraging the right strategy. So if you've got a copy of my book, The Straight Path to Real Estate Wealth, this book documents my lease option strategy that I use in my backyard that you can use in your backyard for making five grand up front, $500 every month of residual income after the mortgage is paid, 
and then maybe clear $50,000 when you sell that house. This book documents what that looks like. That's a strategy. That's my backyard strategy. If I take you into the very best markets nationwide, we're actually going to do a straight rental, but we have all of the forces working together uh, for our good by being in the best markets, best employment areas, best of everything, the right price range, the best appreciation, and all of those will actually be even more financially lucrative than even a lease option. So there's different strategies that are hands-on, hands-off, in your backyard, out of your backyard. And so those are three rules for you on how to deal with your investment properties. So my friends, whether you're looking for the best way to buy a house, there's three rules I gave you there, or whether you're looking for the best rules for how to buy investment property, there's that as well. And uh, as always, check out the links below, connect more deeply with me and my team. Whether you feel like you're too young to invest or whether you're too old, whether you feel like you've got no money and you can't, or maybe your credit's bad, I just want to remind you that real estate done the right way doesn't require money, it doesn't require credit. What it really requires is conviction and commitment and a willingness to act. You bring that to the table, that's what I had, and that's where I see people crush it the most. Sometimes money and credit are a crutch because we think that's why we succeeded or why we have doors of opportunities open to us, and it's false. The door for your financial freedom is already available. Whether you walk through it does not come down to a, a piece of paper, a number, a bank account. It comes down by your desire, your conviction, and your willingness to act. If that's you and that connects with you, then get with me and my team and let's get you started on your wealth building journey right now.